Let's get it straight. Thomas Burley is not a hero. He didn't just burn a bin. He's not a political prisoner. And he's not some figure that's trying to show the great patriotic virtues of British society. He's a man who's been in prison for arson. However, his imprisonment does show how radically divided this country is. And the rioting in Rotherham was highly unpleasant to watch. I was outside London during it and way away from it. Um, and way away from any troubles and spots, thankfully. But watching it showed how truly divided as a society we've become with 400 rioters at peak outside of that hostel in Rotherham shouting and screaming at policemen and throwing glass through things through glass doors and attempting to burn people. Now, I'm sure some people are going to try and defend Thomas and say he is a hero. So with that in mind, I've actually got some videos of Thomas in action. Because the one reason that people are defending him is most people are trying to minimise it and are not watching what he actually did and nor are they actually engaging with him. Here is Thomas in action from Channel 4 who have the best footage I found of it although I'll put the other links I have on this for um, Sky and BBC. Ignorant racist attempt at mob rule according to the judge. Pulling down his mask to... There's Thomas in that circle there. Shout abuse at the police, this man, Thomas Burley. He was one of those who tried to set fire to this hotel as those inside feared for their lives. Footage shows Burley climbing... And the guy there picking up that large uh, um, timber, bit of timber, obviously intent on building some bookcases or putting some shelves up, or maybe not. ...onto this bin, adding chipboard to feed the fire. Thomas, uh, you're dressed okay for bound disorder. Adding chipboard to burn two wheelie bins pushed outside a building. He's not just burning a bin out down. For those people, and I've seen many comments on many channels now going, he's in prison for just burning a bin. As you believe he's just burning a bin, but feel free to, to ask them to come to your house with two wheelie bins stacked on top of each other and start chucking chipboard in and just chuck it under outside your windows or to smash your front doors in. It's all just, just just playful fun, of course. This is the moment the 27-year-old was arrested, a painter who described himself as God's gift to decorating. The court heard he had hints of a white supremacist mindset. Now, I will say that there is... Uh, it has been suge suggested that Thomas has ADHD, which might want to be taken into account. As it, But it's still, what he's doing is not... A heroic behaviour. Nor am I going to subscribe to some myth that this is the best that the British working class can offer. It's not. I grew up on a council estate. My family are all working class. I don't need to chuck things through a window to demonstrate my to demonstrate a political argument or set bins on fire. Everybody can do better than that. I will say, however, it does suggest that the working class of Britain feel like they've been frozen out of all political power. And that people like Keir Starmer and Angela Rayner are not helping that perception. Keir Starmer's come across as dictatorial and arbitrarily cruel to the most vulnerable in society. And he's come across in a way that has kind of ramped this whole thing up. Today he was jailed for nine years, the longest sentence so far following the disorder. The venom of racism infected... And of course, people will be arguing he's not racist and what does racist mean, etc., etc., and that there's no such thing. And that will be banging back and forth between various channels. There is such a thing as racism. That somebody can offer an absolute copper bond definition does not mean it does not exist. I can't offer you an absolutely copper bottom definition of various emotions, such as love or hate. You could always find things that are contradictory and paradoxical. It doesn't mean they don't exist. This game of asking what is racism is a, is a way to evade and be elusive and to dash around the idea that we do have prejudice in Britain. Did the entirety of what occurred spread by malevolent users of social media. The disorder was racist and extreme. It was spread to a large extent by malevolent 
a user of social media. However, I do have concerns about censorship and how it would operate on social media. It's it's a set of questions with no firm answers yet. Extremely frightening for anyone who was there. Among those who were there... However, imagine being inside that hostel and having that outside. 200 people trapped inside the hotel who thought they were going to burn to death. They want to kill us. Kill if you. they catch us, they're going to kill us. They... I would say, looking at that, it's a fair supposition, given the bloodlust in that crowd, that if anyone had been outside from the from it, from the Asylum Seeker Hotel, they would have probably been battered very badly, at the very least. Now, of course, it's going to be those who argue they deserve it because they're foreign. No. No, they deserve it because they're Muslim. No. If we can't do better than that in the society, then the society has reached a, a point of failure where we can't actually address other human beings with the level of dignity we would like to be addressed with ourselves. They included Hamid and Abdullah, not their real names, who at the time told me just how frightened they were. They burn, they want to kill, they make like that. They make Of course, someone will say Hamid and Abdullah come from a Muslim background and they're all like that. However, listen to what Ahmed and Abdullah are telling you about what the protesters were shouting out. It's a bit hard to tell who, who, which side of the fence the, the radicals are on because they all start sounding the same once they sort of stop seeing people and just seeing, you know, generalizations or labels. Gesture. Yeah, yeah, just like that, always. And uh, we're going to cut you. They make. We don't cut you. If you, we don't cut you today, we're going to cut you tomorrow. If we don't cut you tomorrow, we're going to cut you after one week. Yep, I can imagine that being said. Uh, mindless but, uh, threats of uh, foolish guys. The kind of guys who get on a, will get on a fight on a, on a night out on a pub and stuff. And you'll hear shouts, he's not worth it, leave it. Echoing up and down streets all night. They was thinking, we're going to die. I swear, I don't lie. The men who were here seeking asylum showed me footage they filmed on their phones as they watched on helpless. It shows the mob turn. And that's how you move people around to create silly, silly mobs. And there are numerous channels that basically are loose-lipped and full of demagogues who cater to people who like to let other people do their thinking for them. Of course, they'll say, I'm letting other people do my thinking for them, meaning the government. I don't, I don't, if you listen to carefully what I'm saying, you notice I don't agree to, with the gov, I find the government's approach at times to be ignoring issues of the working class and ignoring people from those areas where they're deprived. But this is not a reaction I want to see in, in British public life. It's the reaction of the thugs and the people who are moving them around from channels on YouTube and winding them up are not the people who will be running down to Rotherham to stand there and get their heads kicked in by the police or to be arrested. They're not the people who will be in the firing line when a big barney starts off and it comes to people being bounced off walls or batons being used, as as it will come to in such a situation. They're the kind of people who will sit back nicely monetizing their channels on YouTube and raking money in. Turning on the police. <laughs> Among them, Thomas Burley. Footage shows him attacking officers with a bin. So rather than being sent to prison for burning things in a bin, part of it, the reason he's going to prison, using bins as offensive weapons. Rather different. There have now been more than 1,300 arrests over the riots, with more than 200 people sent to jail. Today's sentencing comes as prison numbers in England and Wales hit a record high for the second... Well, the issue of prison numbers in England and Wales is, a, is another issue, of course, all of its own, and partly due to systemic sort of austerity measures, systemic deprivation of monies from from people who could have built prisons, from the prison service, from the police, a slow, steady sort of erosion of their ability to maintain order and a, a trust that we could do everything by CCTV or smaller stations. It hasn't really worked out, of course, because you cannot replace the man on the ground so easily as all that or his local knowledge. ...week in a row, 
the disorder putting more pressure on a system that was already struggling. Yes, a system that is already struggling. And the prison system is struggling, has been struggling for years and struggling because we've largely okay, worked with a model of just chuck everyone in prison still. Whereas you could have moved on from that and could have looked at why people are in prison, especially with people who are shoplifters or, or stuff like that. We could have actually looked at the root cause underneath it rather than just going on about shop, shop, shops and all that. But it is what it is. But that does not mean Thomas Burley is heroic, to, to reiterate that point. What Thomas did there is something that does need to be called out and punished. You cannot get away with that sort of stuff. Nor can you threaten to burn people in, in a hotel or have repeats of that endlessly. So the judge is plainly sending a, a message by that sentence, like, if you do it, basically fuck around and find out.